Hey, good morning. Good day. Ooh, good morning, good morning. How is everybody? Give me your honest truth. Because I, I, I think I already know. <laughs> Tell me how you really doing. Good morning. How are you really doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. I think I know. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's it. Uh-huh. Because I feel it. Yep, I feel all that. Thank you for your honesty. I'm going to tell you how you're feeling. You're tired. You're exhausted. You didn't want to get out of bed this morning. You feel like you've lost your focus. Let me not look at the screen. You feel like you've lost your focus or like, man, seems like I was getting myself into this momentum and it feels like I just came to a screeching hulk. It feels like um you want to go but you like i just i'm tired i'm mentally tired i'm physically tired i'm emotionally tired i'm spiritually tired it's like you're saying i'm reading my word but i'm exhausted i'm spiritually tired i'm fatigued i feel like i've run out of energy i've run out of i don't have anything to tap into and i don't understand because i'm reading my word I'm spending time with God, but I'm tired. Who am I talking to? Because, baby, I feel you. Mm-hmm. I feel you, sugar. <laughs> yes, sir. I was saying this one. Now, what is this on me? See, this is why you have to be very careful about who you connect yourself to. Because when you connect yourself to people, you start to feel the weight of those people. I'm talking about when you really connect it. I'm talking about when you all in connected. I pray for y'all as, as I pray for my own family. And I feel you. I, I feel you in the spirit. I feel that you are tired. I feel in the spirit that you are, you're exhausted. And this is what you're saying. This is what you're saying. But I got I got to keep going because I got stuff to do. I got to keep going because I got stuff to do. But I'm tired. It's, it's, I got a lot going on. It's almost like you're trying to get yourself together, but you can't get it together. Father, we invite your presence today. We invite your presence. We need you. We need you. We need you. We welcome your presence. Have your way in this conversation. God, what is it that you want to say to us today? We are listening. We are open. We are ready. Please speak to us. My sister, my brother, they are exhausted. Mentally fatigued. Spiritually tired. Physically worn out. But God, we know that you are in control. I don't know what you want to say to us because I feel totally thrown off myself. But I know that you're going to speak and we are listening. Have your way, Holy Spirit. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. I pray that you speak to me through me and then back to me so that I will not just give but I will receive and I will walk it out <sighs> amen amen listen I I I you know Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays are my 4 a.m. mornings where I, you know, I get up and I work out. Tuesday and Thursdays are, um, 
Holy Spirit started speaking to me yesterday about doing a night workout so that I can prepare myself for bed. And, um, <laughs> baby, I got up around three. That's been happening for a few days now. And so I, I'll just pray, sing, whatever comes to my mind, speak in tongues, whatever. And then, you know, I'll say, Daddy, you want me up? If he don't say nothing, baby, I slide back under them covers because they be calling my name to be like, where you going? <laughs> where you going? It ain't 4 o'clock yet. I'd be like, I know I'm coming right back. <laughs> and I go slide right back up in between them sheets alone. And um, this morning, the alarm, I got up at 3.04. So I went, restroom, came back, laid back down. And when that alarm clock went off at 4 o'clock, I was like, why? And why are you ringing? I felt like a brick. Like I could not lift my hands. Because usually I wake up and I'm like, thank you, Lord. Good morning. And I take a deep breath. And I say, thank you, God, for that. Like I, like I just go through this whole... Um, I call it bed awakening, where I, before my feet hit the floor, I give him praise. Before my feet hit the floor, I give him thanks. And as slow as I'm talking right now, I was talking even slower this morning. It was just slow. It just felt like, like a tug of war. How many of you had a tug of war moment this morning where you were just like, I am trying, but... Like if you could, if you could have called in, this was one of the mornings where you wanted to call in, but you pressed your way through. That's it right there, ain't it? I know it. That's good. But you pressed your way through. Wait, what? What is it? What's the scripture you want to give me? But you pressed your way through. There will be moments where you will be tired, where you will feel like, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 you, it's like you're lost for words. I hear the Lord saying, this is what I hear in my spirit. There are, there are a few of you that are, like you are gun ho about doing what God has called you to do. Like you are, like, your face is like flint. Like, God, I'm going to do what you called me to do. I'm over here praying. I'm over here prepping, planning, working. I'm doing it, you know. But I'm telling you, you are stretched so thin. I feel it in the spirit. You are stretched so thin that you are wondering Am I going to make it? Am I going to be able to do all of these things that I, I need to do? God, it, it, it's like you try to take stuff off your calendar, but stuff adds on to the calendar. It feels like we all get the same 24 hours in a day, but it does not seem like we all get the same 24 hours in a day. You feel me? It feels like you done got, got the short end of the plug. Like, God. I mean, how much? I'm going to tell you what else you're saying. <laughs> I know we're supposed to be doing our devotion this morning. Let me tell you what else you're saying. Because I just need to, I just, I just feel that, I just hear him say, I just want to talk to you. I want to have a little chit chat with you this morning. I want to identify where you are so that you know I know where you're, I know that's where you're at. Because some of you have been crying, you haven't been murmuring, you, uh -uh. you haven't been complaining. You, you, you haven't been doing that because you've learned not to do that, right? But what you're doing is you're learning to release. That's it. Thank you, Daddy. God says you're learning to release the pressure. You're learning to open up your mouth and you're learning to lay it at my feet. That is not called murmuring and complaining. That is called releasing. What you're doing is you're coming into my presence and I say to you, this is what I've been saying to you. Oh, what's the scripture about? The burdens. Um, my yoke is easy. Somebody find it for me. Uh, my yoke. Uh huh. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come on. My yoke is easy. 
but my burden is, he's saying, um, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. He's saying, all of you that are heavy and, and, and uh, you're weary, heavy, listen, come here. <laughs> he said, come here, come to me. Mm -hmm. He said, I need you to come here. All of all of you, thank you, Holy Spirit. All of you, this is Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. He said, I need you to come to me. Come here. Don't try to do this by yourself. The Holy Spirit told me, y'all, he said, Jacina, he said, I need for you. He said, I need for you. To make sure that your body is in optimum shape. He said, this is why I've been telling you that I need you to wake up and exercise. And I was like, God, that doesn't make any sense. He said, mm -mm. I need you to wake up and exercise early before you start your day. He said, and then I want you to come into my presence with that exuberant spirit. I want you to come into my presence with that, that awakened spirit. He said, because yes, you've been coming to me, you know, but you've been coming to me sluggish in the morning. You've been coming to me, you know, kind of halfway there because you're really not up and alert and, and ready to talk to me. You're not really ready to sit in my presence. He said, so I need to switch this up a minute. I want you to start ex exercising in the morning so that when you come into my presence, you are fully alert. And what I do when I, you know, I told you when I wake up in the morning, I don't turn on no music. I don't turn on no TV. I don't turn on anything. That's my time to offer up my praise, my sacrifice. That's my time to release things um, into the atmosphere. That's my time when I do my affirmation slash confirmations. That's my time when I get up in the morning. I do not allow, you know, I don't look at my phone. I, I don't do any of that. I immediately start doing my uh, bed awakening where I wake up, I stretch, I thank the Lord that I have you know, eyes to see, ears to, like I begin to get in a mode of thanksgiving before I ask him for anything. I don't ask him for anything. I just thank him. I just lay there and I thank him. I bless him. I honor him for being Elohim, for being Yahweh, for being El Shaddai. I, I begin to acknowledge and thank him for who he is, right? And then after I do that, after I get up, then I, as I'm brushing my teeth and what, as I'm doing all of that, I, I, be, I still be blessing his name, singing songs. Then when I go work out, I'm praising the Lord as I'm working out. God, I want to give you praise. I thank you, Father. I pray. Now I start saying, Lord, order my steps today. Give me the wisdom that I need for this day. I'm just blessing his name. And what I've noticed is that since he gave me those instructions, listen, God is going to give you some different instructions for this year, and they're not going to make sense. He's going to tell you to do something ooh, that you are already having difficulty doing, but it will make sense as you do it. Come on. God, listen to me. God is going to tell you to do something. You've already had difficulty doing it, but he's going to tell you to do it in a different way, on a, at, a, at, a, at a different time, in a different um, fashion. He's going to he's going to restructure. That's it. He's going to restructure the way that you do what you were trying to do and this time is going to work. Mm -hmm. Come on. I hear him saying, "Do it again." Mm -hmm. I want you to do it again and this time when you do it, I want you to invite and acknowledge my presence. You see? So what's been happening is that we 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 get on this journey with God and we get comfortable with him and what happens is when you get comfortable, you lose your fervor. When you get comfortable, you lose your pace. You lose your your your, pers your per perseverance. You lose your.
discipline, you lose your tenacity, you lose those things. Why? Because you've gotten comfortable. Whenever you get comfortable, you get complacent, right? Listen, I as my I, I was I was attending this relationship workshop from bound to found with my sister Shanae last night and as she was speaking about her and her husband Akibo and some things that she's doing, God began to minister to me and he began to say to me and I'm saying to those of you that are single in particular he said, I, you listen, you're already a wife, Jacina, so I need you to start acting like a wife. There are, there are many of you that are praying for God to do some things in your life, but when he tells you to switch it up, you, you, you don't obey immediately. Remember, one of the, one of the nuggets that I shared with you on Monday about how to protect your peace, one of those nuggets was you've got to you've got to learn and discipline yourself <clears throat> to obey God immediately. Do you hear me? You've got to learn. You've got to discipline yourself. You've got to be intentional about obeying God immediately and stop responding to people so quickly. It is, this is why you tired. This is why you're overwhelmed. <clears throat> this is why you got a lot going on. It is because you are responding to people, to the need of people. You, you, your, your focus is people. Let me share. You, you, this is what you're doing. You're saying, okay, I'm praying, I'm reading my word, you know, I'm going to church, you know, I'm doing the things. God says, but the things have become a routine. Whenever something becomes a routine, it has no substance. It, 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 it has, it has no, uh, 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 activation. It, it, it has no, uh, fire. It has no, uh, uh, um, give me, give it to me. It, 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 it has no, I don't want to say value. Well, value. <clears throat> You're lacking something. You ever been cooking before and you put a little, you know, you, you cook your food and you put a little salt and pepper in and you be like, uh, -uh this needs some more. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't enough. And then you go get that Lowry's or Adobe or whatever your seasoning is. You go get that seasoning. You sh 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 and throw your little bit of garlic in there and you know, all right, this is what I'm talking about. That's what God is telling us in this season. He, I told you this in 2022. God says you're not going to be able to do the things that you were doing in 2022 and 2023 and reign. You might get some stuff done, but you're not going to reign. R-E-I-G-N, reign. God says I don't want you to just show up and 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 you know get a little reward i want you to reign i want you to walk in authority i want you to walk in abundance and victory i'm telling you there those of you that are listening to me god is saying i need you not only to do it again but i need you to constantly be asking me how god give me wisdom i told you for the first month of uh for january i were i read through the book of proverbs every day I read whatever that day was, I read that particular chapter in Proverbs. Holy Spirit told me, do it again. Do it again this month. As a matter of fact, I want you to do it for the rest of the year. Proverbs is going to be your foundational devotional. Anything outside of that is a plus. What is he doing? He's saying Proverbs, as we know it, it is the book of what? Wisdom. He's literally giving you wisdom in the book of Proverbs. He said, what I want you to do is I want you to search out different resources that will help you to understand it better. So that's what I've been doing. Some of the resources have been written resources. Some of them are videos. Some of them are podcasts. Listen, God is saying, what I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to, get to you this year, you're going to have... You're going to have to open yourself up for me to deliver it in different ways. So let me give you an example. You know that many of us love Amazon. We love Amazon because Amazon is quick, especially if you are a Prime member, baby. You will pay extra to be a Prime member. Why? Because you want your stuff quickly. God is saying, I know you like your packages quickly, he said, but this year I'm going to take my time. 
there will be some things that I'm going to do and it's going to be a quick work. But there are going to be some other things that I need to marinate in your life. There are going to be some other things that I really need you to walk out the process because it's going to be in the processing that I'm going to do some great things in you and then through you. So the reason why a lot of you are tired, the reason why a lot of you are exhausted is because you're trying to do too much. Let me explain. Lord Hammers, this is like rolling off my tongue. Let me explain. What is happening is you are, um, come on, Holy Spirit. You are, you're hearing and you're doing, but some of us need to be asking God, how much can I put on my plate? Have you? What I've noticed about myself is sometimes I can be greedy because I love food. I can be very greedy sometimes. And I can I can put a whole lot of food on my plate. This is this is why I don't really like buffets because they overwhelm me. Cuz I see all this stuff that I want to try, but I know I can't eat that much in the first place. So I'll go up there and I will literally get two plates. And I will fill my plate up with everything my eyes say yummy to. Then I'll sit down and I'll nibble from this plate, nibble a little from here, nibble a little from here. I won't drink any water because I know if I drink anything, it's a wrap. So I'll just keep nibbling. And what, what I've learned is that I get bits and, ooh, come on. I get bits and pieces of stuff, but I do not get to, uh, uh, um, um, enjoy come on i don't get to enjoy the fullness of what i'm partaking of that's so good that's good that's good daddy that's good he's saying to us this morning what's happening is you're doing bits and pieces of what i told you to do i need you to come and sit down with me so that i can tell you when things need to be done i'm gonna give you another example and i'm gonna bring it on in I had a particular individual that sent me a message and the person said to me, um, I'm not going to be able to, to attend the workshop on this Sunday. I don't think I'm led to do that. What, what I believe is that God wants me to study the word more. And she said, you know, I, um, you know, I have a couple of the friends that, you know, want to join me. Um, can you let me know when you're going to do the verse mapping workshop again? Where you teach us how to go through a verse and break that verse down. And I said, I mean, I'm telling you, I've had a couple people, not just this individual. I've had about two or three other people ask me about that verse mapping class again. And so I said, okay. I said, let me do this. Because usually I'll be like, yes, yeah, so sure. Okay, let me, let me think of a date. And, and yeah, I said, mm-mm. Let me do this. I said, I need to take this in prayer. Because I have some things that I'm doing. But I need to see when God is saying that it's time for me to release that. To walk into that. To do that. Does that make sense? Like, this is what's going to happen. He's already kind of told me, you know, on a full scope, you're going to be doing more events this year. And I'm like, really, God? He's like, oh, yeah. You're going to be doing more events this year. Very similar to how you started in 21, 2021, right? He says you're, you're going to be doing more events, but they're going to be an array of events. If this is what he told me. Listen to me because I'm talking to you. He says, I do not want you nor those that I've connected you to, to think that you only have this much in you. You got a whole lot in you. And it's time that the world sees it. He says, you've been, I'm talking to you. Listen to me. Put yourself in this situation. Put yourself in this, 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 this process, this journey that I'm explaining to you that the Lord has me on and that he's been showing me. You have gifts and talents. I said, and you need to understand that I did not put them in you for them to lie dormant. Who am I talking to? I put them in you 
because I need them activated. However, somebody say however. We will hear. Listen, this is why God said, I, in order to protect your peace and to walk in a, in, in a, in a, a place of rest and tranquility, you are going to have to obey God immediately and stop responding to people so quickly. Baby, I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help you, sis. Sir, I'm, I'm trying to help you. There are some things that God will, 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 will send a word, or send a confirmation, rather, through some people, and you'll jump right up. Yes, move. God will say, move now. But then there are some things God will say, hold on, hold on. That's in the works. I want you to jot that down, but I want you to come over here and ask me the when, the where, the how, the who. You know the what. Let, baby, let me explain something to you. I remember God told me this about my ex-husband. He said, Jacina, I told you, I didn't understand the voice of God then, of course, like I do now. This was in um, 1999. And I met my ex-husband, and I was just so a taken, you know, I was just blown away because he, you know, he was going to church. This man was fasting. I'm talking about that real fasting like Jesus did and Daniel them. John, John ain't playing. John could go with water for three days. I was like, this has got to be God. <laughs> gotta be God reincarnated cause I ain't never seen it before not from no brother not no, no black male around him fasting for three days with nothing but water and I'm talking about go in that room and he be praying go in that room and he be reading the word and I be like dang how long is he gonna be reading this word is it that serious <laughs> paying his tithe going to church serving love the Lord I mean what and on top of that, that brother can cook, baby. Anybody that know my ex-husband and ever had anything he cooks, baby, a beast in the kitchen. Now, I just can't take away what the man got going on now. A beast in that kitchen, baby. And he knows how to fix stuff. He's very handy. He knew how to fix. Oh, I just thought, this got to be him. I was a single mom. Baby, I had them. Been dating thugs and harmony, not harmony, thugs and thugs and mo thugs. Drug, I don't even know what I had going on in my life in, the, in my twenties. Jesus, I'm so thankful that you love me and you saved my soul. But those are the people that I was attracted to because I was a little church girl. So the so the bad boys, they just they just really caught my attention for a while till I grew up. That's another story. Anyway, I remember we started dating and um. We got caught up and he started, he moved in with me and all of that. I remember some years later when we got divorced. And one of the things that I said to God was, can you show me me? Show me who I was in that relationship. And the Holy Spirit said, okay. Listen, you're going to have to be very careful when you ask God to show you you. Because he's going to show you you. And you got to be prepared to see the you that he shows you. He showed me that I was selfish. He showed me that I was comfortable. Above that, he showed me, he said, I did not tell you to marry him. As a matter of fact, I stalled the wedding for you not to marry him. He said, I did not tell you that was your husband. I told you that that was your friend. But you couldn't hear friend because y'all hadn't got caught up and y'all started moving too fast. And see, because he had a stronger relationship with me than you did, you trusted his relationship with me instead of trying to develop your relationship with me so that you could hear me. So what I started doing, let me help you out. I started going to other people and I started asking other people. I would give them our scenario and then I would say basically, well, what do y'all think? And they would be like, oh, I think he's a wonderful person and this, that, and the other. Now, my... My ex-husband, um, he had a job, but he was living with his mom. He did not have a car. He was catching the city bus. It was just things that I knew that I had um, begin to, to be aware of, and I didn't even understand it. 
that God had begun to open my eyes to about the things that my husband needed to have or needed to be walking in before we said I do. He needs, baby, when Adam, God put Adam in the garden and he presented Eve to Adam, Adam already had a job. He already had a place to stay. He already knew, had a vision. He already knew what, what his assignment was, his purpose, to take care of that garden. He knew God, this was already established before Eve ever even came on the scene. But what happens is back then, and some of us is doing it right now, you get too fast in the tail and you see him and you go, oh, he looks nice. Oh, he got a nice job. Oh, he got a nice bank account. Oh, he fine. Oh, he whatever he got going on or she. And you do not go to God and say, who is this person supposed to be in my life? I feel sense and attraction. I don't know why I'm going way over here, Lord. But I want to know, God, who is this person supposed to be? What position are they supposed to hold in my life and for how long? Some of us marry our lesson thinking it's our blessing and it's not. Gee. Yeah, you weren't supposed to marry them. Y'all was supposed to be acquaintances. Hey, how you doing? But now you done gave me your number. Y'all talk. That's why when God tells me to shut something off now, I shut it off. And I tell, you know what? Thank you, but mm -mm. I start pulling back. Mm -mm. Now what I have to practice doing better because I don't like hurting people's feelings. I have to practice saying the words like, hey, look, I don't think this. We're a good fit, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just don't like that whole part. I have to learn how to do that better. It's like God is, he, he, he began to show me, Jacina, these were the things that I was trying to do in you and show you, but you was trying to move too fast. Because you wanted what you wanted. I wanted to be married. So he's saying to me now, I am preparing you. Let's let's fast forward from 1999 to, well, let me just say this. We got married in 2000. I think me and my ex-husband met in July, and we were married in January. Moving too fast. Now, am I saying that can't happen? No, because, baby, I believe God's going to do a quick, quick work with me and my with me and my um my husband, my future husband, baby. It's going to be a quick work because ain't nobody. Anyway, I, I know better this time. I know. I don't ignore red flags and I do not ignore flashing lights. This is for any situation. This is not just for relation. Red flags and flashing lights. This is what it means. If there is no peace in whatever decision that you are getting ready to make, God ain't in that. But it, you could have a level of peace in your spirit, but in your mind, you, you're not sure how it's going to work out. But in your spirit, you got peace. Are you listening? Wherever there's an absence of peace, there's an absence of God and his wisdom concerning that situation. That is so good. Somebody type that and send that to me, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Wherever there's an absence of peace, there's an absence of God, the presence of God. And the wisdom of God. That means you about to do this in your own strength. And I'm telling you, this is why many of you are tired right now. Because you're trying to do something and you have not gotten the, you got the what. That's all you got is the what. But you have not stayed before God in prayer, in stillness, in quiet, in meditation for the when. That's a big one. How? With who? Am I supposed to be doing it with anybody? Am I supposed to be doing it by myself? Oh, baby, God just said, some of y'all out here trying to do stuff by yourself that God told you to partner with somebody. But because, oh, you really want me to say that? Yes, you do. Because you, you have not yet learned. Say it nicely. You got to learn that you are awesome by yourself. Yes, you are. But you're, you're equally more powerful 
when you partner with someone. I'm going to prophesy to you because I sense this so heavy. I'm telling you why you're tired. There are some things that you're doing that God says you're not supposed to be doing that by yourself this time. You're supposed to be having some help. There's supposed to be somebody that's supposed to walk alongside of you to do it with. But you're trying to do it by yourself. You cannot afford to be prideful in this moment. That's pride. Pride says, no, I'm, I got it. That's what pride does. Pride brings a whole lots of people with him. He brings a bunch of his nieces and nephews with him. Offense, strife, division, fear, doubt, unbelief. Like, God is saying to you, listen to me, and you'll know if this is for you because it's going to resonate with your spirit. <laughs> when he tells you what to do, spend some time asking him the when, the how, the where, even the why. God, why am I doing this again? Confirm that your why is, 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 is linked to the kingdom. Is linked to glorifying him in some way. To be a blessing to this person. When you be a blessing to this person, they're going to see me. They're going to see me in you. I think a lot of times the reasons why we are tired is because we out here trying to do this stuff by ourselves. And we say we have prayed. We say we have sought God. But let me, can I just be honest with you? Listen to me. You're not going to be out here just toe up exhausted. If you are hearing constantly, that's it, ain't it? God, don't get used to Boy, let me see. You know, how we be out here trying to do this stuff without daddy? You know what God said? He said, yes, you heard me that time. But you don't keep, you do not keep putting. Ooh! You don't keep it before me. So if I say turn left, you know when to turn left instead. You submit it to me, and then once I tell you, okay, go, you just go. And you don't come back to say, God, we, we tweaking anything? We changing anything? God, is there anything that we need to do? Like, you don't do that. You just be out here like, okay, God said go. Now I'm going to go. Well, God said marry him, so I'm going to marry him on February 14th because I love February 14th. And God said, I didn't tell you to marry them on February 14th. What I told you to do, if you if you keep, if you stay connected, I want you all to go to pre-marital counseling while you're dating. So you can see if you need to continue dating. You stand before him. After you do the pre, you know, you're doing the you're doing the pre-pre-counseling. I, I need somebody to jump up in this thing to see if we're even a good match. Because, you know, we we loving who we is. We just over here like, yes, honey, this is working for me. And, and I need somebody that's got another eye and another ear. That hears from God to say, hey, I think y'all ought to slow down a little bit. And maybe y'all should look at these things while you're dating and talk about these things while you're dating before the premarital council. You feel me? Maybe you're trying to start a business or maybe you're trying to, you know, add another, you know, uh, uh, income, stream of income or whatever the case may be, right? And God is saying, this is what he said, this is what he said. I need you to come and ask me for the details. You want the name of the book, but you don't want to talk to him about the chapters. Baby, a bunch of us doing that. You writing books. You you ready to write the book, but you haven't sat down with him to say, now what's the title of the chapters? What's the key point in the chapters? What's the stuff that I need to put in the book before I even sit down to start writing? God is saying, come to me if you are tired 
if you're weary, you're burdened, and I'm going to give you rest. He says, take my yoke. Listen, take, take this here. Take, listen, he said, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, come to me. I'm telling you, you got to shut off the world. You got to shut off the noise. You got to remove the distractions. And you got to find you some time to go to him. God told me during my lunch break, you ain't doing no work during your lunch break. It's your lunch break. You're going to read my word. I'm going to direct you each day. I'm going to give you the manna for the day on that lunch break. Sometimes he'll have me turn to a message. Sometimes he'll have me journal. Sometimes he'll have me plan. Sometimes he'll have me um, write. Sometimes he'll have me uh, read my word or a devotional. This is what he said. You don't come to me enough. You come to me and then you get what you think are the instructions, but they are just a piece of it. And then you run. You don't come back to me to, continuous, to, to continually talk to me about the details. Okay, let me give you another example, and then I'm, I'm going to stop. He says, let's say, for example, you'll come to me, and you'll ask me, God, you know, what are your plans for me this year, right? So let's say, for example, God says, your plan, okay, I'm going to use me, because... That's just, it's easy for me to use me. He said, Jacina, I want you to do these, this vision workshop. And I said, okay, God, when do you want me to do it? He said, I want you to do it by the end of January. And I said, end of January? He said, yes, because a lot of people do resolutions and they do all of that. At the end of the month, I want you to show them how that is not of me. That is not kingdom. That, that, that is not a part of the spiritual world that I've created you to rule and operate in. That is part of the world system. That's why most of them can never accomplish it because it's something that the world has put into place and you are not to be conformed to the world, but you are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is why I keep saying it and I ain't trying I'm really not trying to um advertise this workshop cuz I'm I'm good with the fact that who is ever supposed to come when I put that little flyer up on my page you are supposed to come God told me don't be doing all this advertising and all this ad do the little things I'm telling you to do and let that be that and those that are ready to do this work those that are ready to really seek my face this year, they'll sign up. They won't care how much it costs. They'll sign up. They'll make the time. They'll do what they need to do because they understand this is vision. This thing is linked to my purpose. This is linked to my life. I can't waste another year. I don't, I don't have time to waste another year out here living life on my own terms and on my own way. Because that's what we do. We want to give God a little piece of something. He will got act like we're giving it to God, but we're not because we're going to be over here doing what we want to do. And God said, okay, well, when you do that, and it tells you in the book of Proverbs, well, you go ahead on then. You go right ahead on and do what you want to do. Now, when that don't work out for you, do not come back over here to me with the crying and the carrying on. Because you did that. When you could have settled yourself and came over here and talked to me. And I don't mean one time. Oh, God, did you say? I just heard the Holy Spirit say, that's why, that's why a lot of you are struggling in your relationships. It's because you go to the person one time. You do not have continuous communication about what needs to happen in that relationship, in that marriage, in that family, in that business. You got to have continual conversations. Y'all ain't wanting it today. I'm, you know, I'm tired. I ain't trying to give it to you if you don't want it. I'm telling you right now, I ain't. Shoot. Y'all got to be tired too. Baby. God say, y'all really be doing the most with me. Y'all want to come to me when y'all want me to fix something. You want me to give you something. You need something. Now you want to run to me. Oh, Lord, I, I didn't spend time with you. I'm finna fast. <laughs> God be like, bro, y'all, man. But because of my love, I won't turn you away. But I know God be like, 
Here she, here she, here she, here she get ready to come because that pressure. That pressure. Oh, he coming because that pressure. Oh, it's a little hard, bro. Now, nah, that pressure. Anytime there's pressure, we want to run to Jesus. Lord. And he be like, yeah, I've been waiting on you. Had you came to me before this, had you kept checking in with me about your life, about your plans. Because see, in Proverbs, it tells us God wants you to plan. He wants you to organize your day. He wants you to plan your month, your, 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 you know, next three months, you know, nine months, your year. He, yes, yes, yes. He's all for it. Yes, he wants you to sit down and say, God, this is what I feel that you're speaking in my heart. This is, these are my dreams. This is what I desire to do. God, I'm asking, I'm submitting this to you. God, I'm asking that you bless it. I'm, and when you say I'm asking that you bless it, that means God, show me, confirm to me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. If it's not, show me so that I can turn and walk the other way. I can do what you want me to do. Because at the end of the day, we're going to make these plans, but it's going to be the God is going to be the one that says what's going to happen. But if you submit it to him, you're saying to him, God, this is, this is what I'm sensing, but I release it to you. This is what I believe is going to happen. I desire to happen. I'm praying to happen. But God, you're in charge. I submit these plans. I submit my life to you. Show me how to walk this out. And he's going to do it. This is why I'm saying to you, many of you, you are tired because you're not constantly going back to God asking him, Ooh, is there any revision needed? Because he got the provision. He's saying, you, you're not coming to me for the revisions. And so I don't need you doing stuff out of your own strength. So let me tell you what I, what I mean. He told me to do the workshop at the end of January, so I did the first one. He said, now I want you to have an online one um, the 1st of, of February, which I'm going to be having on Sunday, right? So I went to him this week because I was doing my planner, and I, I, I sat down and, 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 and I said, God, the workshop was so successful. It was absolutely amazing. The people that came, they were so receptive. They were like elated on fire, ready to go out here and, and continue this. I had one of them text me yesterday. I am still working on my vision. I'm still working on what we went over on Sunday. That just blessed my soul because you know how we do. We'll love something like it. And then, baby, 10 minutes later, the next day, child, we moving on to the next thing. We're not even doing that. But I'm telling you, I know God what God told me to do. So when I was sitting down this week planning for Sunday, listen, planning for Sunday, I said, God, is it anything you want to speak to me about the workshop that I need to change for the online workshop on Sunday? And he said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I need you to determine another day to do an in-person one. He said, because the in-person, there is nothing like being there in person. There's a different anointing on the word that is released in person. Yes, God can move online, but there is a different anointing in person. He says, so I need you to do an in-person one. This is what I said, when? Instead of, okay, and let me look at my calendar. Let me see when I'm available. Because that's what I would do. Just go check. That's what I would do. Well, let me see when I'm available. When I oh, well, I can do it on this day. He said, I, I stopped and I said, "When God, when do you want me to do it, and where? When and where?" I said, "I won't move until I hear from you." The old Jay Cena, even in 2022, Jay Cena would have said, oh, "Okay, God, I heard you," and I would have started planning. Oh, I've been I've been sitting with him too much. God, what do you want? Cause see, you know who needs to be there. You know what they schedule gonna be in whatever month. You know. Now show me. I refuse. To stop walking around here being so arrogant, thinking that I know how to do. If I knew all of the things that God knew, it wouldn't be no need for the both of us. 
I don't know. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So I want to say to those of you that, you know, you have businesses and you create content, especially, I don't know why the Holy Spirit has me saying this, but I'm going to tell you. Oh, yes, God, I heard you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God says, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God says, I'm going to show you the need. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you the need. I'm going to reveal the need to you. And it's going to confirm what I've already been talking to you about. But then I need you to come back to me. And see how I want to fulfill that need. Notice how he wants to fulfill the need. Not how you want to. Because now you're putting yourself back in the, in the way. And you got to move your... If you... That's your name. If you want to see the hand of God move in your life like you've never seen before, you've got to move out of the way. You have got to constantly seek him on the next steps. Not, oh, I got the step. I'm good, God. Thank you. Uh-uh. What's the next step? What's next, God? What's next in this relationship? What's next with these children? What's next with this business? What's next? I promise you, as you continue to go to him and seek him on a consistent basis, you won't be so tired. I even had to ask God. I said, God, I'm getting up at four and it just seemed like, man, I was in the class with Shanae last night. I was exhausted. I was so tired. Holy Spirit said, I need you to start eating. Jacina, you start your day at 4. I need you to start settling down and have your dinner by 7. Because I need you to start winding down and be in bed by 8.30, no later than 9. You really need to be trying to get in there between 8 and 8.30. You've had a long day. So the earlier your day starts, the earlier night has to start. Does that make sense? He showed me... I need you to tweak that. When you tweak that, you're going to sleep so much better. You're not going to wake up so tired. I was like, oh, yeah. So I need you to have your stuff together. If you're having a class at night, whatever you got, going, I need you to get your stuff together, plan your time where you can get your stuff together. Ask me consistently, okay, God, what do I need to do to make sure that I have... Da -da 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 so he said, I want you to turn your camera off and go in there and eat. Eat. Because I didn't want to show no signs of being disrespectful or unprofessional, you know. So I went and got my food. I sat and I ate, but I still listened. I was diligently listening and very much connected to what she was speaking. Once I finished, turned my camera back on and I stayed connected. God told me this year, any events that I do online, to put a disclaimer. If you cannot sit and actively participate, that means have that camera on and have yourself seated so that you can actively participate and readily receive. Don't even sign up for no workshops with me. Don't even sign up. I'm gonna say this, and I'm, I'm God. I'm asking that you help me to say it with the with the with the with the sweetest way I can say it. We have got to stop showing up, especially when people are giving stuff for free. But even if you pay for it, period, we got to stop showing up and not showing up. Y'all, we we take stuff for granted. We show up with our cameras off. That means you're not prepared to receive. I don't care what you say. When you multitask, you always miss key points because you're trying to do too many things. Well, I'm a walk and I'm a No, you need to be still. God cannot speak when you're doing this and that. Come on, y'all. When are we going to get serious about God? When are we going to get serious about ourselves? And when are we going to honor these people that have that been... 
I mean, when people put on workshops and classes and seminars and conferences and stuff like this here, that stuff takes time to prepare for. And if they're serious about that, that they call or whatever they're doing, they hours, days. Listen, some of this stuff is years of stuff we've had to endure, walk through, become overcomers for us to be able to deliver. And people got the nerve. I can't do it no more. I cannot. I would rather you not even come on. If you're not going to have that camera on, just don't worry about it. I don't care if you got to come on there with your bonnet and your pajamas. But it's like we show up for everybody else. I'm setting a standard for my ministry. I'm setting a standard for my business. I'm setting a standard. If, you, if it can't be done in excellence, first of all, I'm not going to do it. I literally ask God, God, do you want me to have the online section or do you want me to cancel it? You want me to cancel it and do it another time? I'm still asking him. Even if I have to call those people and say, look, I can refund you your money, but the Lord told me to do this in person. And I'm, I'm sensing it. Mm. I understand. I understand. He said, this is why I told you I need you to do another one. And I need you to let them know I will be doing one in person. Hey. <clears throat> I want everything God got for me this year. Everything. I'm tired of saying, oh, God, you know, God, God's going to do it. This, that, nothing, and writing stuff down. But I'm not partnering with God. I'm not sitting still long enough, I, consistently enough, to be, to be able to hear the details continuously unfold. You think Moses just heard God one time? You think Abraham just heard God one time? You think Jesus just heard God one time? No, they had to continue to go back. They had to continue to keep their ear to his mouth so that he could speak. And that's what he's saying today. If you want to live the abundant life that I have promised you, if you want to live the Ephesians 3.20 life that I am ready to give you, where I plan to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask, think, imagine, or dream of. He said, it's going to be according to the power that worketh in you. You're going to have to settle yourself, partner with me on a consistent, disciplined basis to hear what I have to say. The moment you get out of line, the moment you lose that balance, you will not be able to hear, and therefore you will be operating in and of your own strength. For, and when that happens, that's when you become tired. That's when you become overwhelmed. That's when you become frustrated. That's when you become agitated. That's when it doesn't work. That's when it was working, and then all of a sudden it broke. It's because you are not leaning your ear to my mouth. You heard me, then you walked off. I got it. Like a little kid, I think of a little a little baby. They, oh, give me, give me. And you give it to them, you be like, come back with it. Come back, I'm not finished. And they just go off, and then they come back, and they be like, it's not working. I know it's not working because I wasn't finished putting it all together. Bless your name, Jesus of God. Amen. I hear the Lord speaking to me, so I need to log off. I can hear him so clearly. It's like he's downloading stuff to me, and I need to get myself in position so I can write. I believe you need to do the same. I believe he's speaking to you right now concerning some things, and you need to sit still.
Do not log off of here and get busy if you can. Sit yourself still and let him make these downloads. You've been asking, and he said, I'm ready to make the download because I have your attention now. And then make it your business to keep your ear to his mouth. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this time today. Thank you so much. You always come through. We thank you for the manna for today. I pray, Father God, that we will not just be hearers, but we will be doers. We will be intentional and disciplined, consistent and committed about walking out what you have spoken to us today. I pray that this doesn't fall on deaf ears or hardened hearts, but I pray, Father, that this word will be received, this will be seed in the ground, and that we shall see fruit as a result of what has been spoken. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. I pray that he will be gracious to you. I pray that God will cover, keep, and protect you, you and your family. And I pray that goodness, grace, and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. I dropped today's scripture in the chat. I pray that you will continue to look over it and, and just let it get in your spirit. And I pray that you will see God on the next steps. He's ready to talk. Are you listening? Love y'all. I'll see y'all on Friday. Bye-bye.